Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about something that I've been kind of meaning to bring up for a few weeks now, and that is I started head covering for church services. I am going to be wearing a cloth covering every time I go to church services or have corporate worship. Um, and I started doing this about three months ago, and I wanted to come on here and explain to you guys why I did this and why my convictions on head coverings changed. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I do want to go ahead and read the Bible verse um, that involves head covering. Although if you're Christians, then you already know the whole head covering debacle. And um, you'll know that it's a very controversial subject. And I do want to say right away, this is not something that I want to come across as judgmental. Um, I'm not telling you guys what to do. I'm not telling you, you should start head covering because I started wearing a head covering. I just wanted to walk you guys through why my convictions changed, why my convictions are different from the way I grew up and different from my families um, and why they changed and my journey that brought me to the place that now my husband and I both think that um, I should cover my head when I'm in church worshiping the Lord. Okay, so 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 3, but I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man, and the man is the head of a woman, and God is the head of Christ. Every man who has something on his head while praying or prophesying disgraces his head, but every woman who has her head uncovered while praying or prophesying prophesying disgraces her head, for she is one and the same as the woman whose head is shaved. For if a woman does not cover her head, let her also have her hair cut off. But if it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved, let her cover her head. For a man ought not to have his head covered, since he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. For the man does not originate from woman, but the woman from man. For indeed, man was not created for the woman's sake, but woman for the man's sake. Therefore, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angel. However, in the Lord, neither is woman independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as the woman originates from the man, so also the man has his birth through the woman, and all things originate from God. Judge for yourselves, is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him? But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her. But her hair is given to her for a covering. But if one is inclined to be contentious, we have no other practice, nor have the churches of God. So this passage from the Bible has always been pretty confusing to me, and I think um, a lot of Christians find it very confusing. A lot of non-denominational Christians, um, I think, don't really understand it. I know I never understood it. I never looked into it. And I feel like because we don't look into it, we just kind of sweep it under the rug. Now, I don't want to make too many generalizations, and I don't want to say we swept it under the rug or we don't care. Um, I'm mostly just talking about myself personally. I know that this Bible passage always was confusing to me. Um, at one point, it sounds like a woman needs to cover her head, but then at one point it sounds like the hair is the covering. Um, I am going to be linking two sermons that I found really, really helpful um, that really dove deep into the meaning behind the scripture and really talked about what the scripture was saying here and everything they said. They really backed themselves up by the Bible, which I really appreciate. I don't um, appreciate pastors at all, even if they have really good points that don't back themselves up with the Bible. I feel like if you are going to make an argument about something that is biblical, you need to be biblically based and back yourself with scripture. Um, so please, if you, if this is something that you are thinking about doing, if this is something that you've never looked into and you want to look into, definitely look into people that are pro head coverings and people that are pro hair being the covering. Um, because I did want to say really quick, the Bible is very clear that a woman is to cover her head. That is not even an argument. I don't think there is any argument out there for a woman not to cover her head. The argument here is whether hair is the covering or if you need to actually wear a piece of cloth as a covering um, because the bible is very clear that a woman is to wear a covering and that man is not to wear a covering i definitely wanted to talk a little about my journey that brought me to this place of wearing a head covering for church um, and little background too i have not changed denominations i'm still a non-denominational christian and i actually go to a very large church of about 300 people i am the only woman there that covers her head as far as i know there might be someone else in the church who covers their head. But as far as I know, I'm the only woman that actually wears like a cloth head covering. So it's not because, you know, we're going to a new church that has persuaded me that this is the way. This is just something that my husband and I really truly think is a biblical matter um, and something that we want to follow, a commandment that we want to follow. Head coverings are not a salvation issue. Um, if you don't cover your head, if you do cover your head for church services, you're not going to lose or gain your salvation through it. Um, but this is something that I do take very seriously because because any commandment in the Bible is serious and we do have to take that serious. And it's really our personal duty as a Christian to make sure we're following God's commandments as closely as possible because this is very important to God. 
I think that it was kind of when I got married that I really started just questioning a lot of the beliefs I grew up with. And um, when I say questioning, it doesn't mean that I don't follow the same values that I grew up with. In fact, through questioning the values that I was taught growing up, I really realized why I wanted to continue living out these same values and stick with the same morals. Um, But something that had always bothered me, even as a kid, was the fact that I did not cover my head in church. Um, And we did grow up with some Mennonite friends, which I think kind of changed my view on it a little bit because they explained why they wore head coverings. They were kind of my friends that, you know, showed me the Bible verse for the first time about head coverings. And it was at this point that my dad kind of made a statement to the family um, because my mom was like, do you want us to cover our heads? Is this something important? And he said, no, you know, he thought hair was the covering. Um, And so that was my first memories of like head coverings and realizing that some people actually, you know, wear head coverings as an actual cloth over their heads. And if you know anything about Mennonites, you know that they um, actually wear head coverings at all times. Um, And I unfortunately have to admit that the number one reason I did not look into head coverings for myself, even for years after I got married and years after I married moved out of my parents' house was simply the fact that honestly, I was fearful of giving up something that I loved. And that is my hair. I have always really loved my hair. I've always loved having long hair. I love having curly hair. Um, I like doing, I don't do a whole lot of things with my hair, but I really, really do love my hair. And it really is something that brings me joy. And I find a lot of beauty in it and a lot of pride in it. Um, And honestly, the number one reason that I didn't look into head coverings was simply I didn't want to know because I didn't want to become convicted that I needed to cover my hair at all times because I was scared of giving up something that I loved so much. And honestly, um, it was really that pride that um, convicted me. Like I just realized over time, you know, this is something I'm not looking into because I'm fearful of giving up something I love. And as a Christian, we are supposed to give it all up to Christ. We are supposed to be willing to die for Christ, die for his cause. And I'm too scared to even give up something as simple as my hair. And this was when I really gave it to God and I prayed about it and I decided, you know what, um, this is something I'm going to look into. And if I think the Bible is saying to cover my hair at all times, this is something I'm going to have to give up. This is, you know, some beauty, pride, whatever you want to call it, that I'm going to have to give up to follow the Lord. Um, And I will say that I do not think the Bible says to cover your head at all times. I'm wearing it right now, not because I'm wearing head coverings at all times from now on. I just wanted to wear it for the significance of the video, but I am only wearing head cloth coverings for church services and corporate worship. And if you watch the sermon that I have linked below, um, he'll go over the Bible verses and explain why it's necessary for church, but not the rest of the week. That's not something that we're called to do. Just like men are not called to have their heads uncovered at all times. Women are not called to have their heads covered at all times. Um, Something that I wanted to also note right away is that this issue of head coverings is not a woman's issue. And in our church today, we act like it is just a woman's issue, but it is a man and a woman's issue. And one of the reasons that I really started looking into head coverings and really became interested in it, women got rid of head coverings when the feminist movement started. And um, this was so mind-blowing to me. And, you know, part of the reason that women covered their heads was to show submission to their husbands. And that is a huge thing that feminism has really destroyed. They have destroyed submission to husbands. They've destroyed um, the mindset that women should listen and obey their husbands. And part of that was head coverings. You know, feminism and feminists couldn't stand to see women showing such an outward sign that they were going to submit to their husbands. Um, And that was a huge wake up call for me to really start looking into this and looking into if it was something that was biblical. Because honestly, I always kind of assumed that like women covered their hair way back in the old days. I didn't realize it was common practice up until feminism and feminism took that away from women. Um, And again, looking into the Bible verses, I really, my husband and I both just really became convicted on how the Bible really talks about women covering their head. So I want to go back to how this is not just a woman's issue because In this same Bible verse that says women should cover their heads, it talks about men not covering their heads. And to this day, evangelical Christian men, non-denominational Christian men, do not cover their heads. They don't cover their heads when they pray. They don't cover their heads when they preach. And they don't cover their heads in service. They don't um, cover their heads when they're in church. And 
the Bible verse says, you know, praying or prophesying, but prophesying is another word for worshiping. So men do not wear hats when they are worshiping. And it would look very strange if you were a pastor, you stood up to preach and you had a hat on your head, or if you're a bunch of men that go into a church service and you're wearing a hat on your head, that would be seen as very disrespectful. Honestly, I think at most churches, the elders would actually probably say something to you. However, women no longer cover our heads and it's not seen as strange anymore. But it's funny how men still follow the practice of not covering their heads. However, women don't follow the practice of covering their heads. Now, there is the argument that hair is the covering. I grew up in a family where that was, you know, our family's belief. That was my dad's belief that hair is the covering. However, I do think that um, that is not the case. It talks about women covering their heads and men uncovering their heads. So if hair is the covering, how are men to uncover their heads? If hair is their covering, there's nothing to uncover. Are they supposed to shave when they walk into church? Are they supposed to, you know, cut a certain length off before they walk into church? And then when they walk it it doesn't make sense. And that was another huge argument that really got my husband and I thinking. Um, and again, just because we think this way doesn't mean we are right, because this is a controversial subject because it's not super clear. However, these are just um, the things that I've kind of learned over the past year. Um, I've really grown, honestly, and my husband and I both feel like we've learned a lot and just kind of realized how this was something we should have looked into more and we didn't. And again, That 100% was a sin issue on my part because my unwillingness to look into it simply out of fear um, was extremely wrong. And I have repented of that. And I definitely feel really terrible that the past five years of marriage, I never looked into it only because of fear and because of fear of having to cover my head, which ironically, now I cover my head. Although I will say um, I'm very grateful that I do not have to cover my hair at all times. And covering my head at church has really been super easy for me. I mentioned, you know, I'm the only woman out of, you know, like 300 people that covers her head, but I really don't find it embarrassing or awkward or weird. I'm just doing what I can to best follow God, you know, as best as I can. And so it's not embarrassing to me at all. I mean, I'm already a mom of two kids. I feel like once you become a mom, nothing embarrasses you anymore because you've just already been through so much. A common argument that people have against head coverings is that in the Bible verse, when Paul was writing a letter to the Corinthians, that it was simply a cultural issue and that women no longer have to wear head coverings because it was just a cultural issue. And so, um, you know, it's not cultural to wear head coverings anymore. So it's not the case. However, I think that is actually the weakest argument. And it's funny because I used to hear that and just kind of believe it. I used to hear, oh, it was a culture issue. So I just assumed, oh, it, it was a cultural issue and didn't pay it any more heed. However, if you read the Bible verse, it in no way implies that it was cultural. In fact, the very opposite of the case is true. It talks about head coverings being worn as a sign of submission to husbands. That was not cultural. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians do think that submission to husbands was only cultural. I do not believe that. I think that submission to husbands is something that God calls us to to this day. And the preachers that I was listening to that were talking, you know, pro head covering, they both brought up the fact that other people will say, oh, it's just a cultural issue. But There's no backing behind the saying that it was a cultural issue. Um, And the Bible verse makes it very clear that it was not a cultural issue. It talks about angels and um, angels, again, are not cultural. Angels are always there. Angels have always been around since God created them and they always will be around. They don't die. Um, So it's not a cultural issue. And the Bible verse is very ground in the spiritual realm, in the patriarchy, and those are not cultural issues. They are biblical truths that we know to be true to this day. So um, that was just really such a huge wake up call to me. Like, why have I just been assuming this is a cultural issue because I've been told it's cultural. But when you look into the Bible verse, it's not cultural. Paul is not grounding it in cultural practices. He is grounding it in biblical truths. And this was just a really big waking moment for me to realize like I you know I think I've been wrong all these years I would really recommend listening to the sermon that I'm going to have linked in the bio or in the description box or whatever you want to call it um because they really go into the bible verses and explain it really well I'm just kind of giving you a quick overview of why I changed my mind and why I started covering my head for church services I want to end this video with a couple thoughts okay I want to leave you guys with a couple things um and I don't want to leave it off just coming off super judgmental and being like oh my gosh 
it's in the Bible that you have to wear a head covering. So anyone that doesn't is disobeying God. But I do want to leave you with a couple thoughts on why I am covering my head. And um, here's my first thought. It's very countercultural because it is showing a sign of submission to your husband. And I think that is really important. I think we need more of that in this world today. So I think that is a good way for me to be very cultural countercultural to say no to feminism, to say no, this is something I will still do. I still believe in biblical gender roles that God clearly laid out for us to obey. Um, and another thought that I have, I could be wrong, right? These, these preachers, pastors could be wrong. Um, maybe it was just a cultural issue. Maybe the hair is the covering. Um, but I would rather be safe than sorry because the Bible never says that it is a sin to cover your head with a cloth. It does say that it is wrong for a woman to uncover her head. So it would be better for me to die and be standing before God and have him tell me, you know, eh, you wore a head covering all those years. You really didn't have to. I would much rather hear that than God telling me, you know, every time you went to church, every time that you, you know, were worshiping me, you were sinning because you didn't listen to my commandments and you weren't covering your head. And that was a commandment that I had. Um, and so because of that, I really will continue to wear a head covering because I could be wrong. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And I would love if you guys have sermons that you would like me to listen to either against or for head coverings, I'd love for you to send those to me because I am still looking into it. However, I have felt really encouraged with the sermons I've heard that are for it and just looking into the Bible verses, reading through them, really trying to understand them. I really do feel convicted. This is something I should be doing. And I do recommend that this is, if this is something you've never thought about before, or if this is something you've never looked into before, please look into it. Um, and if the, at the end of the day, your conviction is, or your thoughts are, no, this is not something that God commands of us. That's okay too. I mean, that's how my family lived. That's how I lived most of my life. Um, but I do really encourage you women to look into this. I think it is an important issue that is kind of being swept out of the way and people don't want to talk about it or um, dive deep into it. And I think it is important for us to take every commandment the Bible has and to really look into it and see why they're saying that and try to understand and listen and obey as best as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from and I hope you enjoy seeing my head covered at church from now on. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Please like and subscribe. Bye.